Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in New York, Mr. Lockhart is on the way to work. He is absorbed in his work, and appears rude and uncaring to others. Lockhart attends a meeting with Hank Green, Hollis, and Wilson, the higher-ups. They look at a note sent by the company's CEO, Roland Pembroke, who is meant to be away for two weeks in a spa in the Swiss Alps, but hasn't returned and appears to have had a breakdown, according to the note. Green shows Lockhart an illegal document he submitted, and is now being investigated by the SEC. Lockhart is instructed to bring Pembroke back or face the consequences of his actions. In a flashback, Lockhart pays a visit to his elderly mother in a retirement facility. She claims to be dreaming about a small music box with a ballerina inside of it, but she is oblivious that she is dreaming about it. His mother passes away just prior to Lockhart's departure, and is cremated, but he decides to retain the ballerina. Lockhart calls for a taxi as soon as he lands in Switzerland, and the driver's name is Enrico. As the vehicle makes its way up the hill toward the spa, a resident of the village hurls a drink at it. Enrico observes that the hill people and the peasant in question have a history of conflict. There is a legend of a nobleman, who married his sister so that he might keep his family's title. After learning that his sister could not bear children, the baron began conducting experiments on the villagers. These trials sparked an insurrection, which resulted in the baron's sister being burned alive. When Lockhart finally makes it to the spa however, he finds that it is already shut down for the day. In the bathhouse, he runs into Pembroke, and the two of them decide to go swimming together. Lockhart asks Pembroke to accompany him on his journey back home. Pembroke doesn't want to leave, despite the fact that he seems to be in good health. Lockhart and Enrico leave the hill, and before they go, Lockhart gives Enrico instructions to take him to a hotel so that he may make a phone call. There is no cell phone service on the hill. In yet another of Lockhart's flashbacks, the young Lockhart is shown riding in the automobile with his father. After hearing the news on the radio that stocks had plummeted and a large number of jobs had been eliminated, his father drove across a bridge while it was raining one day. He then stops his car, and walks over to the edge of the bridge. Lockhart remains standing there, as he watches his father jump after having abandoned him in the automobile. Approaching the hotel, one or more deer dart out of the surrounding woods and onto the roadway. After Enrico has a collision with a deer, the vehicle drifts off the road and ends up in a ditch. After three days have passed, Lockhart finally comes to a spa room. He is then confronted by Dr. Heinrich Vollmer, the director of the spa, who reveals to him that the accident caused him to suffer a broken leg. Vollmer asserts that he shared the news of the accident with Green. During his stay, he recommends that Lockhart check out the amenities that the spa has to offer. He is put in a room where he can hear the toilet handle rattling on its own, without anyone touching it. Additionally, Lockhart drinks some water, and notices a parasitic organism floating in the glass. Lockhart comes into contact with a number of patients, including Frank Hill, Ron Nair, and Victoria Watkins. Their favorite thing to do in Watkins is to work on crossword puzzles. The three of them appear to be very satisfied with their treatments. Lockhart then meets Hannah, a young woman who sees herself as an outlier. She and numerous other patients, as well as Volmer and other staff personnel, may often be seen swallowing vitamin drops from a blue container. Lockhart is being treated inside a water tank. The water begins to fill, and the orderly caring for Lockhart gets distracted. Lockhart panics as the tank fills up with eels. He rises and gets yanked off his breathing tube by an eel. He almost drowns, until he opens the tank and spills the water out. She relays the tale of the Baron to Lockhart after Watkins brings it up in conversation with her. She asserts that the health spa was built on the ashes of his castle, which the locals of the area had previously set ablaze. Watkins claims that the kid was taken from the Baron's sister's womb and placed in an aquifer, but the child was able to survive in both environments. In exchange for a ride into town on her bicycle, Lockhart gives Hannah a figurine of one of his ballerinas. They are traveling together and making a stop at a pub in the area. Lockhart buys drinks for himself and Hannah, and then runs into Enrico, who survived the incident, and was given a new car with the money that was provided to him by the spa. Hannah remains to take in the music and put on a show for the other patrons, dancing on her own in front of them. Lockhart comes into a barn in which a young boy is painting a scene of the castle on fire. Peter, Lockhart's father, approaches Lockhart. Lockhart is interested in learning more about the spa and its background. Peter proceeds to check on a sick cow that is going to pass away. After cutting open, he discovers a stillborn calf as well as some eels. When Lockhart returns to Hannah at the pub, he sees a dude dancing next to her, and Hannah seems to be enjoying it. Lockhart makes an effort to get the punk away from the woman, but the guy assaults him instead. He is rescued by Volmer, who at the time is on his way to pick up Lockhart and Hannah. Lockhart makes contact with Green, 
who expresses interest in learning more about what transpired between him and Pembroke. Lockhart alleges that Volmer called them about the accident, but Green was unaware of it until Lockhart brought it up. He gives Lockhart and Pembroke the instruction to head back to New York City within the next 24 hours. It is necessary for Lockhart to remove the tooth on his own after it becomes loose. He then hands it over to a member of the staff, who puts it into the water. After that, Lockhart leaves to carry on with his investigation into what happened. He makes his way through the wings, and then skirts around the staff. When he enters the room, he sees several individuals, including Pembroke, who look to be dead and are being held in water tanks. In addition to this, he unearths a subterranean region that contains a pool in which bodies are dumped and fed to eels. It just so happens that Mrs. Watkins is one of those deceased. Lockhart gets caught red-handed by the caretaker Volmer when he attempts to return to his chamber. Lockhart brings up the problem he has with his teeth. He is restrained in the room, with a drill placed into his front teeth, as the procedure is performed. After escaping the spa, Lockhart makes his way into town on foot, to talk to a law enforcement official about Volmer's research. Lockhart is handed back to Volmer, who is accompanied by a member of the staff. Lockhart talks about the tanks and his interaction with Pembroke in this passage. Pembroke then reappears, confirming Volmer's assertions that Lockhart intimidated Pembroke and threatened to bring him back to New York by force if necessary. Lockhart has no choice but to accompany Volmer back to the castle. After receiving additional treatments, Lockhart starts behaving and thinking like Pembroke, coming to the conclusion that he is unwell, and must remain for a cure. While he is writing a note to his superiors, he has an epiphany, and realizes that no one can unsee the truth, no one can change what they have seen. While all is going on, Hannah is swimming, and she also starts her period. The eels initially come into close proximity to her, but soon they begin to swim in a complete circle around her. After that, Lockhart shatters a glass and uses the shard to cut open his cast, which reveals that his leg was never fractured to begin with. Suddenly, he rushes out of his room and into Hannah's path. She is terrified and punches Lockhart in the face, as he attempts to help her. Hannah dashes into a room where Volmer the staff and some patients are enjoying dinner. Lockhart rushes in and begins to convince everyone that Volmer is a liar, and is to blame for everyone getting sick from whatever is in the water, which causes their teeth to fall out as a secondary effect. Patients begin to stand, which Lockhart believes is in support of him, but they are all working against him, as they cautiously approach him, claiming to be ill. They all swarm around Lockhart until he collapses. Lockhart awakens in a chamber in which he is motionless. Volmer inserts a tube down his throat, and injects the eel-filled liquid into his body, where the eels filter out the vitamins that Volmer requires all of his patients to ingest. Lockhart has his teeth corrected and looks to be changed in the same way that the other patients are, trapped in the idea that he is ill. Volmer hosts a celebration for the patients and workers that night. He even buys Hannah a new dress for the event. Lockhart begins to come to his senses in his chamber, as he recalls what Watkins told him about the Baron. He discovers a portrait taken not long after the fire. There's also a note that says, she doesn't know. Lockhart smashes the painting, and magnifies one of the subjects, a man with bandages all over his face, with a glass. What the portrait didn't show was the man holding hands with Hannah, a little girl. Hannah is led into a room near the transfusion wing by Volmer. He keeps a portrait of his sister, who was also Hannah's mother, there. Volmer binds Hannah and prepares to have his way with her. Lockhart escapes his chamber and runs into the caretaker, who punches him until Lockhart forces steam to blast in his face, and bludgeoning him to death. Lockhart then locates Volmer and rescues Hannah. Lockhart and Volmer battle, and Volmer pulls the skin off his face, revealing himself to be the horribly scarred Baron. Both he and Hannah have been able to stay alive, thanks to the vitamins, for well over a century. Lockhart sets Volmer up for a fall in a trap, and while he's there, Volmer spills a significant amount of fuel, which prompts Lockhart to light a fire. Volmer sets the drapes ablaze, in an effort to extinguish the flames that he has started himself, catching fire. The fire quickly spreads across the rest of the stronghold as a result. Lockhart makes an effort to liberate Hannah, but Volmer immediately attacks him. Hannah gets a shovel and uses it to strike Volmer in the head as he prepares to kill Lockhart. However, Volmer is able to get Lockhart close to the eel pool, before he commits the murder. After tripping and falling into the pool, he has an unfortunate encounter with it. Lockhart and Hannah make their escape from the burning castle, as the other patients and staff members leave. They get away by stealing Hannah's bicycle. They are halted on the road by a car that is coming their way. Lockhart is given the order to get into the automobile as Green Hollis and Wilson exit from the building. Lockhart reveals to them that Pembroke has died. They invite him to come back in, but he declines their invitation. Hollis is concerned about Lockhart 
and wants to know what's wrong. According to Lockhart, he is doing a lot better now. Lockhart continues to ride off into the night with Hannah, while wearing an evil grin on his face. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.